All right, welcome back. We're going to take a look at comparing strings lexicographically. Now, this is more than just comparing them alphabetically. Even though we could use it for that, and we could even sort something alphabetically, we're actually comparing it lexicographically in reference to UTF-8. So if we go over to Wikipedia, you can see here, in the UTF-8, we have a whole bunch of printable characters. And as we go from top to bottom, left, left to right, you can see here exclamation point has a hexadecimal number 0021. And as we go across, it just keeps going up higher and higher. So as you can see, the hexadecimal number for A you know, is less than the hexadecimal number for, for B, or capital B, sorry. And of course, you know, and tilde is much, you know, a much higher hexadecimal number than, say, 0021 you know, for our exclamation point. So we can actually compare things like uh, exclamation point to the letter G to whatever we want to. But anyway, in the strings.compare, uh, package, we can compare two different values. So if, for instance, the value on the left is equal to the value on the right, we're gonna, it's going to return a zero. If the value on the left is less than the value on the right, it's going to give a negative one. And if the value on the right is greater than the value, on, I'm sorry, the value on the left is greater than the value on the right, then it's going to give us a plus one. So let's just go ahead and run this. There we go. Since A, lexicographically speaking, comes before B, gives us a negative one. And since B comes before A, this is giving us a one. And since A is obviously equal to A, it's giving us a zero. Now, one thing we're going to get into a little more depth later is that you can, you can and should use these comparison operators instead of using the strings.compare function. Um, returning a 0, negative 1, or plus 1 isn't going to be as useful as just being able to return like a true and false. And plus, this is a three-way comparison. So it's going to check if it's equal. It's going to check if it's you know, less than or greater than it, you know, you may not want to do all those extra operations if you don't have to. But anyway, uh, using the equality operator here, we're just going to, it's going to tell us, hey, is A equal to B? Is B equal to A? Is A equal to A? And let's just run that. And obviously, A is not equal to B, so we get a false, we get another false, and when we get the same value, equal, we get a true. Now, here we're just checking to see if A is greater than B. So it's asking, does A, uh, does A come after B? It does not, so that is false. And this one here is just asking, hey, does B come after A? It does, so that is true. So back to looking at those hexadecimal numbers we have for UTF-8, A is you know, 0061 and B is 0062. So if you want to think of them as their number in the UTF-8, well, A, you know, 0061, is not greater than 0062. So yeah, that makes sense that we return false. So that's just another way you could look at that should you want to. And here we're asking if A is less than B, being that A comes before B lexicographically, we get a true. Nope, oh, a little typo there. Oh, that's better. And since B does not come before A, we get a false. And let's remember that we're just, this is just to take a look at that, we're not evaluating the value of these, remember, these are strings, they're not numbers. So it might look kind of funny. We ask, hey, is 50 less than 9? 
and it returns false, well, these are strings. We're not actually looking at the numerical values. We're just looking at what comes before what, since 5 is 0, 3, 5, and 9 is 0, 3, 9. Well, you know, that's, that's going to return a false. Um, also, one thing to remember, it doesn't really matter what the rest of the letters are if it's just going to look at the first letter of both of these. So, obviously, this one has a bunch of Z's. doesn't matter. Um, it's going to go ahead and return false because it's just looking at this first letter, and Z comes after A, not before. So, it's going to return false. Now here we're just talking about uh, the efficiency of doing this. So if you can, use the comparison operator. It's going to be way more efficient. And the strings.compare is a three-way uh, three comparison. You know, so it's, it's going to be a little overkill. If you just want to know something's greater than or lesser than something else or, or equal to, you, know, you don't need to check all three of those. And you would just ask, you know, using the comparison operator is what you want use it. And if you want to know more than that, you can still use the AND and OR operators as well with them, but it's just going to be a lot more efficient. So um, return, like I said, returning negative 1, 0, and 1 is not very useful. Uh, if you're comparing something lexicographically more than anything, you're going to be sorting it. So, you know, and sort function, it's going to be using this less function here. So if we go over to we go over to the package for sort, you know, you can see this, this function is actually used quite a few times in here. Um, so this less function, I think it's like seven times in here. But anyway, this is something you're going to use quite a bit. So if you were using the compare function, say if you wanted to return true or false or something, I mean, you'd have to, whatever you're going to do with it, you still have to make another comparison Say, hey, you know, if it's negative one, what do I want to do with it? Where if I'm just checking if something's, you know, less than or greater than something else, well, then I already get a true or a false, and I can use that, you know, as an expression just to run a function or something. But anyway, um, the designers really do want you to use the comparison operators. Um, I think they said they put this, put this in here for symmetry with another package. But anyway, all else fails. Just use the comparison operators. I hope that was helpful, and I will see you in the next one.